This video is brought to you by Candu Rail and Terminals. It's green, so it's nature. On July 17th, 2025, I was one of two invited to view an important step Candu was taking in advancing the sustainability of the rail industry. But before we get into it, let's take a little trip back in time. In 2023, Kandu announced the plans to build a lithium-ion battery-powered locomotive to switch at a new terminal in Alberta. The province and their government is going hard on clean energy, with solar, hydrogen like CP Rail's locomotives, and with this guy, Battery Electric. About 2-4 to four million dollars was granted by Alberta through the ERA, or Emissions Reduction Alberta's Industrial Transformation Challenge. Just about 15 projects across the province were and are part of the challenge worth about $225 million. Over the course of two years from October 2023 to October 25, the project rapidly changed from planning the charging, material sourcing and whatnot on the drawing board to building and having the working prototype in testing. By July, the prototype was in full working order, tested out a little bit here in Winnipeg, which we'll see in a little bit, and shipped out west in August. On September 10th, 2025, the locomotive was officially unveiled by Candu at the new Southlands Terminal just outside Edmonton, Alberta. It's a brand new rail yard that can handle over 600 rail cars and serves a few industries, including Imperial Oil, a customer they've been good partners with for over 25 years. Now let's briefly yap about the locomotive of choice. The EMD, or Motive Power Inc. GP15D, is a somewhat experimental road switcher from the early 2000s. Even though it shares a similar name to the GP15, it was an evolution of MPI's MK1500 locomotive. The older ones, built under Morse and Knudsen, were rebuilt GP7 and GP9s, while the new ones, built under MPI, were pretty much new from the ground up. They're equipped with Caterpillar 3512D V12 diesel motors, cranking 1500 horsepower. The only difference between the 15D and the larger GP20D is the dynamic brakes, really. The 2000 horsepower GP20Ds have them, and the 1500 horsepower GP15Ds don't. The locomotive sort of fell off the face of the earth as early as 2003, as manufacturers of switchers were focusing on a new technology in these kinds of locomotives, not to mention some teething troubles with the cat motors, slow loading, and some electrical gremlins as one engineer stated. Otherwise, crews remarked about its visibility and comfort compared to other road switchers. CIT or CEFX owned about 10 GP15D units in total, with the only other owners being Amtrak, with their 10 units 570 to 579. So finally, the unit used for this project was CEFX 1504, an MPI EMD GP15D built in 2000. I'm not sure where it was for an entire decade, but around 2012 it was leased to the Stewart Southern Railway based out of the Regina, Saskatchewan area. After that, it was seen being tested on the SRY in Vancouver, and then ended up here in Winnipeg on Kandu's Central Manitoba Railway by 2014. I got this one photo of it here one day while on a bike ride, and then, while at the store, I got this really dookie video of it, or the other unit, 1507, pulling onto the CN main and going into their Symington yard. I don't think they performed well enough for Seamer, as they were sidelined and sat in the storage line for years. Until finally, the project was greenlit, of course, and 1504 was moved to the shop nearby and stripped down to the frame and cab, and rebuilt to GP15 BEL number 2501. So going back to July 17th of 2025, I was invited to the Seamer shop in the northeast corner of the city, along with Steve Boyko, another Winnipeg area train enthusiast famous for his long-running train geek blog site and grain elevator photography, for a quick walk around of the unit. Some quick specs here, it makes around 2500 horsepower now with a dozen liquid-cooled batteries, the same kind you'd find in Teslas. The hump on the top is for 800 amp overhead charging, which I'm sure is on the list for Kandu's expansion when it comes to EV infrastructure. Same sort of thing that some electric buses use to charge. They've got adequate fire suppression technology, so it'll be pretty safe in use. The fuel tank is still intact, however, since it's not going to be filled with diesel ever again, it's full of concrete to help with adhesion, along with a large concrete slab inside the long hood. Also inside is the air compressor, an 100 amp short power charging cable, and climate control for the battery and DC traction motor systems. 
The cab, which we didn't really get pictures of, is relatively unchanged, just a new electronics cabinet installed. And like the GP15s originally, it does still have the toilet in the nose, which I'm sure crews will really appreciate while on the job. Another goal of the project was ease of maintenance. They set out to use as many standard parts as possible to make it easier to work on, either on the field in Edmonton or in the shop here in Winnipeg. There are plans to have a dedicated EV shop out in Alberta in the coming years. Overall, while battery technology is still fairly new, only really advancing in the past 15-ish years, Kandu is very confident in the reliability and longevity of this unit. They said, quote, It won't go far and it won't go fast, so it doesn't need dynamic braking or regenerative braking, which obviously saves money and maintenance hassles. Plus, the batteries have a 10 plus year expected lifespan, so with regular charging before and after a workday, they're sure that 2501 will do well in its day-to-day -day job of switching terminals, even in harsh Canadian winter weather. Of course, this project will save on fuel costs and, of course, lower their carbon footprint in the long run. Alright, now let's see this thing in action, shall we? Before we left, the maintenance manager that guided our tour explained that 2501 would be doing a little bit of testing the next morning. So I biked out over to North Transcona around 8am on the 18th and was immediately greeted by a westbound CP grain train with an all KCS consist. While the 321 was rolling by, I noticed wheels moving on the track behind the grainer. It was a short tank car movement powered by Border Chemicals' little Titan trackmobile. The trackmobile moved east over Day Street to another facility of theirs, and I decided to finally head up the street to the Seymour North Transcona Yard Crossing. After a little bit of waiting and a quick chat with a couple guys that followed me on Instagram that happened to be driving by, GP15 BEL number 2501 and regular GP15 number 1504 moved closer to the crossing as they assembled the Symington transfer train. This spot on Day Street is pretty cool as you could watch CP and or Seamer switch the yard and a mainline freight train go by, like this one here that actually had some pretty old twin stack well cars. A little bit after, 2501 finally assembled enough cars to be able to pull over the crossing.
This deer crossing the tracks at the same time stopped for a good few seconds to take a look at the strange grey locomotive. Totally. Now when I say this thing is silent, it is dead quiet. I don't even think 1504 was online. The only thing you're going to hear out of 2501 are the cooling fans, bell and horn. A lot of people think the GPD units have pretty ugly cab designs. Sure, that's fair. But with how high the unit rides and the size and number of the windows, I'm sure crews will appreciate the visibility when pulling or pushing. Overall, the well-known net zero emissions goal is still a long ways away. But this locomotive is a significant step towards a more environmentally friendly, sustainable transportation industry for customers through the hard work of can-do rail and terminals. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. First off, want to give a huge congrats to the hard work of the team at the Seamer Shops for rebuilding this engine. Wishing you all the best with this engine and the EV project. And obviously, a massive thank you to Candu for inviting me, a foamer, to a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. As always, this is the Winnipeg Railfan saying, see you next Tuesday. Thank <laughs> you.